Before the Cambrian period, Earth seemed lifeless. Although life had existed for about three billion years before, it was only single-celled and consisted of algae, except for a plant called Charnia. But then, everything changed. The early ancestors of almost every animal we know today were born in those years. What happened? The Cambrian period. We know a lot about the Cambrian, and the main reason is because of the Lagerstätten. Lagerstätten is when organic material is embedded in soft sediment, and has preserved incredibly well. Also, because of the sharp increase in biodiversity, you can easily tell it apart from other periods. The most well-known Cambrian organism is the trilobite. It does have a relative today as well, the giant isopod. If you just got over jaws, this might keep you out of the seas a bit longer. Life Anyway, because of the abundance of their fossils, we used to think it was the trilobites who ruled the seas, but new evidence suggests otherwise. It turns out, the reason there were so many trilobite fossils was because of their hard shells, which not many of their neighbours seemed to have. Now we know, the oceans were ruled by the likes of Anomalocaris and the Opabenia, strange, alien-like creatures which roam the open seas with their many eyes and spiked tentacles, looking for a tasty meal. Despite the many forms of life, there are very few free-floating creatures such as fish, as all of the life seems situated around the sea floor. Even the very first vertebrate, Bakia, was born in the Cambrian. Biodiversity Billions of years ago, there were these structures called stromatolites and microbial mats, and they contributed to most of the structure and protection on the sea floor. However, some burrowing creatures from the Cambrian started to damage these ancient structures, and they collapsed. This caused a drastic change in the seabed, and many forms of life couldn't cope. What started as the Cambrian explosion turned into one of the great mass extinctions of history. Land and Geology The landscape of the time was dominated by a gigantic supercontinent, Pannotia, which was in the process of breaking apart at the time. The land itself was incredibly barren, devoid of all life. The only things that even stepped foot, or tentacle on the land, stayed only on the short stretch of ground by the sea, and that life was mainly biological soil crust, a thin layer of microbes that fed off the nutrients there. Now finally, I'm going to talk about evolution. In life that sexually reproduces, different genes can drastically change an organism over a short period of time. For example, your child won't look exactly the same as you, because your child also has a set of genes from their mother or father. But because there's much more capacity for different genes, there should be billions of different species by now. This is where Darwin's natural selection and genetic drift come in. Natural selection states that the creatures with the best genes will survive longer, and have more offspring. For example, during the Industrial Revolution, there was a moth which camouflaged itself from predators. But, when all the smoke and pollution started to pour out of the factories, the entire landscape changed colour, and only the moths with the right colours could survive. Those with different colours were quickly spotted by birds, and were eaten. Genetic drift is where, in an isolated place, such as an island, a species with no danger to its kind will continue to reproduce, and just by chance, a certain gene might become more popular in their offspring, and over time a new species is born for no apparent reason. In microbes and creatures that reproduce asexually, evolution is quite a lot slower, as each offspring should be almost an exact copy of its parent. The reason they actually evolve at all is because of mutations Slight mistakes in their DNA when it's being copied. Also, bacteria can share helpful DNA with their entire populations through horizontal gene transfer. This is why antibiotic resistance is so imminent. All in all, without the Cambrian period, we wouldn't be here.